It's one of the great sporting events in America. The Atlantic Coast Conference Basketball Tournament, live from Tournament Town, Greensboro, North Carolina. It's the fourth and final game of this first day. The 11th seed in this tournament, the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets taking on the sixth seed, the Maryland Terrapins. And a pleasant good evening, everybody. Mike Hogwood here, along with Bobby Crimmins. We'll be your host for this tournament through the weekend on Raycom Jefferson Pilot Sports. Bobby, let's talk about this game. Georgia Tech, Maryland, huge for the Terps. It really is. They defeated the Yellow Jackets twice. In order to keep their NCAA hopes alive, they got to do it a third time. And don't forget, last time was overtime. All right, we're about ready to get going with this game. Tim Brandt, Mike Jaminski will call all the action from here in Greensboro, North Carolina, the Greensboro Coliseum, straight ahead. Welcome back inside the Greensboro Coliseum. Tim Brandt along with Mike Jaminski, the final game of this first day here in Greensboro. Mike, what do you expect in this one? Well, you know, Maryland has got a lot to play for, Tim, a possible NCAA tournament bid. Uh, Georgia Tech trying to duplicate what Wake Forest did and live to play another day. Take a look at the food line starting lineup for Georgia Tech. Smith, Dickey, Morrow, Clinch, and Mario West. For Maryland, Ibekwe, Nick Kaner, Medley, Gist, Jones, and DJ Strawberry. Tim, I'd be surprised if this wasn't a high-scoring game. Both of their uh, games during the regular season were. They're two of the poorest defensive teams in the, uh, in the conference. So they, both of them should be over 80 in this game if it plays out. Maryland beat Tech twice in the regular season. 86-74 in Atlanta, 87-74 in overtime at the Comcast Center, College Park. Two teams without a big-time legitimate point guard. And turnovers have been an issue for both of them, as you see on that initial play, kind of an ill-advised lob inside. The officials, Carl Hess, Gary Maxwell, and Curtis Player. Paul Hewitt is in his sixth year at Georgia Tech. He's won 107 games with the Jackets, comes in with a record of 11 and 16. Here's Gary Williams. Gary Williams is in his 11th season. He's the winningest active coach in NC2A, Division 1A basketball, the 11th winningest coach in his 17th season at Maryland, averaging 20 wins a, a year. Maryland 18 and 11, 8 and 8 in the conference, comes in as the number five seed. Georgia Tech 11 and 16, 4 and 12 in the conference this year. Hey, Anthony Morrow, the guy who missed that shot, is the guy, Tim, who needs to come alive for Georgia Tech, especially against Maryland. He's really struggled from the floor, 9 of 29 in the two games, and they need his perimeter offense. DJ Strawberry to Jones with a little hook. Shot won't go, followed by a Beckway. Maryland's on the board. Well, Maryland's picks have been very impressive in their wins and uh, climbing all over the offensive glass. You've got to get a body in a Beckway to get. Morrow's one-hander is short. Turks will push it. Strawberry. To Beckway. He walked. Actually, there's an offensive foul on that, and uh, Beckway, and I think Tim, this is where he gets himself into trouble, that he puts it on the deck and tried to cause, you know, try to force too much. Foul number 25. Tim, the Maryland just underway at the Greensboro Coliseum. Already earlier today, Miami beat Clemson, Wake Forest over Florida State, and Virginia over Virginia Tech, 60-56 this evening. Very disappointing loss for the Seminoles. Uh, I, I still think they're in the tournament. But they really would have sealed the deal with a win against Wake Forest and uh, Wake getting a second win late in the season with the season ending win against NC State and then a first round win against uh, Florida State. Dickey backs in, gets it out to West. Shot clock now at three. West, tough shot. Last touch by Maryland. And they reset the shot clock. as sure about Florida State as you are. <laughs> I think their weak schedule hurts them badly. Well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure. I think you know, only 20 I, I, teams I, had a weaker schedule. I, I don't think the many Seminole fans are going to be sleeping between now and the selection Sunday. But I, you know, I, I think that they played well down the stretch. Uh, the, the win against Duke. That's why I said that that win uh, in the first round tournament, and I think a loss to Wake Forest, the 12th seed, is really going to, you know, that that may stay in the resume a little bit. Georgia Tech over for three, turns it over to Strawberry, who takes it to distance, and is fouled by Mario West. Let's take it across court to Scott Przewanski. 
Guys, I think the player just made a play right there. DJ Strawberry, somebody to keep an eye on. Keep in mind, he's the guy who blew out his knee last year, almost didn't play the entire season. He battled back just to get an opportunity to play. Then he was forced to play a new position, point guard. Never played it before. But keep in mind, he's got a pretty good tutor in Gary Williams who played point guard. There's been a lot of tough love between the two, but DJ has progressed. I think he's really got to direct the offense and defense tonight in order for Maryland to be successful. Well, he makes the first, makes it a 3 nothing ball game, Scott. Thank you for that. DJ is a 67% free throw shooter. I don't think Gary doles out anything but tough love. <laughs> He's not a warm and fuzzy guy, is he, Tim? You've known him uh, a long time. I know he's the all-time winningest coach in the history of the University of Maryland. That, that was a great ceremony to have Lefty Griselle there to kind of pass the baton to him. Possession arrow belongs to Georgia Tech. Four-nothing Terps. Yeah, it really was. You know, I think both of these teams have the philosophy that they can get into the other one defensively and cause turnovers. We talked about neither of them having a true point guard. Dan Frederick. And, that, and that's where he's at his best. I mean, in, in, his, in his heart, he's a scorer. Uh, they've tried to make him a point guard. He's been, he's had moderate success. But uh, when, when he's looking for his offense, that's when he adds value. Nick Tanner Medley. Mike Jones, tough shot. Bang from three. And when he hits the first one, it could be a long night for the Yellow Jackets. He's that type of player. Gary Williams gave him the green light when Chris McCray became ineligible, and he's been producing ever since. Dickey with a nice move. He's fouled. The bucket will count. Foul on yes, his first. And let's take a look at the replay. This is very good defense by the Yellow Jacks. I mean, they get a hand up. That is under duress. But Mike Jones, a very strict shooter, likes to shoot on the left side of the floor. You look down the other end. I think that Maryland is going to have to commit over the course of this game, Tim, to come down and double team Dickey. He is alert inside, and he is he's too big and strong for either Gist or Beckway to guard one on one. Dickey makes the free throw. You saw Fiotas Tarver, number 44, come into ball game. This is Tanner Medley. Gist has it slapped away. Clinch cross court pass. Tech is a big time rebounding ball club. Back again. Yes. Really, so Sam Frederick is stepping up. Had 17 and points against Clemson on Saturday. Yeah, it really has nice control. And, and he too likes to operate in the lane area, go off the bounce, create some little floaters for himself. Jones kicks it out. Kaner Medley on the baseline. One of the foul called none. Beckway with another rebound. Up tempo right now. now. Both teams not afraid to push the ball up the floor. That's what I thought Kaner Medley would do the first time before he drove and lost it. Well, he's taking less threes this year, Tim, and he's trying to be more aggressive and get inside, get to the lane. But yeah, I talked about that Jones likes the left side of the floor, that uh, Kaner Medley likes the right side of the floor. Most left-handers do. It allows him to get to that left hand in the middle drive. Turps by three. Tarver with a nice move, then has it blocked. Here comes Jones. Kaner Medley. Turks on a roll. Well, they're taking care of the ball. They're making good decisions. And when that happens, more times than not, they score. Inside of Dickey, who banks it in. 12 to 9, Maryland. I talk about a high scoring game here. <laughs> not even to the first TV timeout and 21 points combined. Both teams now with their mouths open, jaws hanging. Kaner Medley gets the roll. You know, he now has seven points. That's two things, Tim. That's the pace of the game, and it's the ACC tournament. I mean, you get, you, have right. to, you get to that first TV timeout, and you have to get your second win then. It's a lot of emotion right now for these guys. Dickey again with a nice move, but has it slapped away by Jones. And I'll go to the line for one more. Timeout on the floor. We'll take one as well. Kaner Medley now with seven points.
Maryland out of the gates early for the 16-9 lead. Class of 2006 ACC Legends presented by Food Lion and Pepsi. We're honoring some of the ACC greats, including Buck Williams of Maryland and Drew Barry of Georgia Tech. That'll be fun Saturday. I'll be a part of that. Former teammate of mine, Buck Williams, played for him uh, six years at the uh, New Jersey Nets. And you know, the thing that people don't realize, I mean, he was an awesome power forward, and he weighed about 215 pounds. I know it. I know uh, but it. just Nobody so used their body better. No, and just so strong. Uh, incredible. And a great, a great team. As a matter of fact, I had the honor of being inducted in the North Carolina Sports Hall of Fame with him a couple of years ago. It was a really special night. Strawberry now with five points and three assists. 17 to 9, Maryland. Frederick, nice pass to Dickey, and again, a lot of contact, and the foul is called. I believe it'll be on. Who they call that on? Smith? It is, and it's Smith's first. Well, and Georgia Tech with the right Georgia idea. You want to attack pressure and try to score, and, 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 and uh, Dickey had a great look at it, but just missed the layup. Sterling led better in for Maryland now. Gets it across to Strawberry. So Ledbetter now takes the point. Strawberry will go to the number two. And he shoots for three. See, I think he bails out Frederick when he does that. He's much bigger. He should try to get into the lane area and work against Frederick. And again, Maryland comes up with a rebound at Beckway. Frederick's not afraid to shoot, I'll tell you that. Here's a Beckway foul line. Really increased his range this year. Not afraid to put up the foul line jumper. Also has the ability to put it on the floor, as we talked about. Yeah, Beckway has four. Maryland has a 10-point lead. Timeout on the floor. Mike, take a look at the four keys of the game. Well, for Georgia Tech, a fast start, Tim, mostly for their confidence, and then strong finish because they've had trouble closing out game. They've had a lot of halftime leads. For Maryland, take care of the basketball. They've got to get positive possessions. So far in this game, only two turnovers in the first six minutes, so they're getting the job done there. I think Tech would have liked to get and have gotten a faster start here tonight. Nick Kaner medley off to a quick start, seven points. Brian, you know what? You, you come in with a special sense of urgency as a senior to this event, and Kaner Medley wants to see this weekend last for his Terrapins, and he really has gotten them into a good rhythm offensively here early. Terps ended the season with wins over Miami and Virginia. The Virginia win was on se senior day in Charlottesville. In the last game at University Hall, which was a big win for Maryland. Those were two critical wins to keep their hopes alive. They were sitting at 6-8, and eight, and they had to win those games to have a chance. Dickey is short on his jumper. Last touch by Maryland. Yeah, I agree with you. I still think it's no secret. Maryland has to win tonight and probably tomorrow against Boston College. However, Maryland beat Georgia Tech twice during the regular season and only played BC once and won that game. Yep. Uh, and that was, but you know what? It was early. Their quality wins were all early, and that was when McCray was still on the team. So that's why I, I think there's still some doubt. And I agree with you. I, I think they have to get to the semifinals. And a foul is called on Travis Garrison. Well, as you look at the Maryland resume, they were the 2002 national champs. So they had the 11th toughest schedule in the country. Well, well but the, the one the one number that's a little skewed, they really, in the in the committee's eyes, only have 17 wins because Chaminade's not a Division I school. So that's why that number is, you know, it's, it's a little bit off and a little bit deceiving. Dickey is fouled, and he'll go to the line. Well, they're 47th in the RPI, 39th in the Sagarin. And as you mentioned, most of their wins came early. They beat Boston College, Minnesota, Arkansas, plus eight ACC wins. It's the second on Travis Garrison. And, and you talked about the strength of schedule, which was really high at 11, and they are the only team in the ACC that, that had to play Duke and North Carolina twice, and they, and they lost all four of those games. But, Mike, six of their 11 losses were to top 10 teams. Yeah. Which I think the committee will look at. Well, and that's you know to win. You know, I, <laughs> Dickey misses the first. I'd rather have top ten wins than I know you oh, got to put on your resume. And, and you know what? How, how I'm you, saying if you're making an argument yeah. in Maryland, how do you start to parse out how good a loss is? I mean, I, you know, I don't know how you quantify that. Well, then you have to have Maryland or you have to have basketball people on the committee, and you say, wait a minute, could they beat some of the teams? Say, for instance, in the Valley, where everybody's talking about that's the hottest conference right now, and get five teams in. 
Well, I think there are teams in this league that have to schedule better, flat out at the end of the day. I know that I know that the, the, the regular season is a meat grinder, but teams in this league have to upgrade the schedule. I think that's clear. Foul is on Jeremy Smith. His second. So that'll get Aminu in the ball game. If Beckway goes out, Powers comes in from Maryland. Bowers had one of his best games against Georgia Tech earlier in the year. Here he is with a little jump hook, followed by Gist. You know, Bowers is the big body that they could use in that flex offense. With, uh, you know, the, the guy that you could throw it down into and try to manufacture some points. He's a big, big target inside. Last touch by Gist. Georgia Tech ball with 21 on the shot clock. Didn't hit the rim. Maryland leads by 10. Well, I talked about the defense early on and, and Maryland has made big strides in the last week I think they've closed out well they, they've really held their opponents to 66 points 37 percent shooting so those those numbers look good as they build momentum coming into this weekend Tech 0 for 4 beyond the arc shot clock now at 10 West gets away with a walk perhaps ball still loose and it'll be Maryland basketball well, All Tell presents this All Tell ACC trivia question. Maryland has won the ACC tournament three times. What year did they win their ACC first championship? Hmm. 23, Mike Jones. Maryland. You know the answer, Michael? Maryland. I do, and uh, was not alive to see it, just to give everybody <laughs> That's a pretty good hit. That's a pretty good hit. <laughs> Kaner Medley on the baseline. Has it knocked away. West pushes it. And the block on Maryland. So Ledbetter is called for the block. That'll be his first. Maryland follow number 12, Sterling Ledbetter. Uh, this guy at the line, I think, is, is somebody who could be an X factor for Georgia Tech in this game. We talked about perimeter offense, and, and Clinch was hurt early in the year, had a stress fracture in his leg, missed five games. But he has been fantastic in his last two, averaging 21 per, and, and it's really the, become the offensive force from the outside that they thought was going to complement Morrow. But he's only a 60% free throw shooter and misses the first. Tech now at the line, just one for four. And still trails by 10. This is a boat. And they've been stuck on nine for a while now. Let better nice pass to Gist. He can't handle it. Oh, a good help side defense by Mario West stepping in to get the steal. Clinch off balance. Draws iron. Bowers knocks it out of bounds. If Beckway will come back into the ball game, DJ Strawberry will. Kaner Medley will get a rest. Yes, we'll get a rest. There's the look inside. You got to cover up. There was a great cut by Giz, but then you have to rely on your guards to dig down in that situation and provide help. Thirty on the shot clock. Plenty of time. Lynch does give him another outside shooter. Shot clock at 15, taken away by Strawberry. Strawberry ahead to Jones. Wow, what a play by DJ Strawberry. It's not often that you can block a jump shot, but he just kept his feet on Morrow, went up and picked it clean. Strawberry has 129 steals in 74 games in Maryland. Clinch beyond the arc. You know, today, Georgia Tech is just not manufacturing any easy points. They're having to play against the half-court defense of Maryland. Jones! Well, Georgia Tech now just four of 17 from the field. An emotional game and one badly needed by Maryland. Take a look at the ACC Tournament Brackets presented by Toyota. 
and I think, Tim, I think the winner comes out of the bye group. I, I don't know of a tournament that plays four rounds where the guy, where the team that has had to win four games in a row, I know the teams that, that have gotten to the finals, NC State comes to mind. But as far as sealing the deal on that, playing that fourth game in four days, it's awfully tough. That's why I asked, why do you play the regular season? For seedings, for bye, for rest. No question. All those reasons. That's why I think the winner's going to come from Duke, Boston College, NC State, or North Carolina. And right to me, Right now, North Carolina is playing the best basketball than anybody in the with you, 100%. And they're, they're young, uh, they're, they've got some depth, uh, all, all the things that you need to win this tournament. So Miami, Wake Forest, and Virginia all advanced today, all close games. Right now here, Maryland on a 9-0 run over the last four and a half minutes, while Tech has gone 0 for 9. Here's Clint. And the Beckway is fouled. Now here's the thing early on. Morrow coming over the back. Georgia Tech. They've got nine points. Eight of them have come in the paint. They're not making their jump shots. They have to establish something in the lane inside uh, and, and then build out right now because their jump shots aren't falling. Well, that kind of decision making is why they're four and 12 in the conference. And, start, and, and started out two and up. Oh. <laughs> People don't remember that. I think we're looking pretty good early on. Maryland has six assists and eight field goals. The other day they had 21 assists against Virginia, 25 field goals. So they're helping each other out. Here's a Beckway in tight. And Maryland's got its largest lead. Bell working short on the jumper. And Georgia Tech loses it out of bounds to Maryland. Well, you, you, you applaud the aggression. You had two guys going for an offensive rebound. But, I, but again, I like I, I like the theory, you know, that West made an aggressive move inside, and then they had people on the offensive glass. Uh, much better to try and score us that way than just to rise up and launch an early three. Halfway through the first half here, and Tech with only nine points. Strawberry. And this would be Bowers over the back. Right, and I think... Right now, Paul Hewitt's toughest job is, is keeping this team in it emotionally. I talked about the fast start. I think there might have been a tendency with the season they had for this group to become disheartened if they weren't in the game early. That's the first on Bowers. And Kaner Medley comes back into the ball game and Bowers goes out. If he can give us some quality minutes tonight, that really helps Merrill. So if they could expand that rotation inside and add that fourth guy, no question. It, it, it gives you five more fouls. Uh, it gives you minutes. It gives you some, some rest. Inside, this foul will be called on a Beckway. This broadcast is a copyrighted presentation. Any use of it without the express permission of Raycom, Jefferson Pilot Sports, and the ACC is prohibited. That's the second on Ibekwe. Keep in mind, Maryland, with this lead of 23 to 9, is also one of those teams that goes on long droughts without points. So if you're playing them and you fall behind, you know you have an opportunity most times to get back in it. Sean Dickey, a 73% free throw shooter. Tech at the line tonight, just one for five. Makes the first. Dickey pulled down 14 rebounds last Saturday against Clemson to go with his 16 points. Big ball game. He really has blossomed as a force inside. Talk about a guy you need to, you to throw the ball in. His, his low post game is pretty solid. He's done a nice job on the boards. Lipler loses the handle, now resets the offense. Jones, they jump out on him. Extend the defense when he plays. Well, and Mario West is their stop. Uh, and they, they put him on Jones, and we haven't called Jones's number in a while. Tech, 0 for its last 12 attempts. A foul on Maryland. And it's called a kiss. That'll be his second. Maryland getting a little bit of foul trouble here. Well, and it's, you know, and, and also Georgia Tech, not a bad way to calm the game down a little bit, get to the free throw line, score some points there, set up your pressure if you want to a little bit, but not quite get into the track meet that, uh, that Maryland wants it to be. And Rashawn Dickey, pretty good free throw shooter. 
at least until you've gotten, I know Georgia Tech likes to run and get them down, but at least until you've gotten yourself back into this game, it may not be a bad idea to take a little bit of a breather right now. You mentioned Dickie Blossom. I mean, he's averaged 15.7 rebounds over the last 14 games. Misses that one, and Kaner Medley comes down with him. Yes, the turnaround left hander rolls it in. And the one area that Paul Hewitt wants to improve in most is defensively. Gist able to just get right in front of him in the low post and receive the pass. It's much too easy of a catch. Big rebound by Dickey inside. Backs it in. That was huge. Uh, Derek, DJ Strawberry had mistimed his jump. He was in perfect position, but as he was coming down, it allowed uh, Dickey to just go up and hit point blank range. Cuts Maryland's lead to 11. This is Jones for three. Splash! Yeah, covered, covered well, but if again, Frederick, his height, that Jones able to rise up and have a good look at the basket. Maryland now three for five beyond the arc. Strawberry almost had another steal. Let's go over to Bobby Kremens. Bobby? Well, Tim, um, I'm starting to send out an SOS for uh, Mark Price, Dennis Scott, or Marvin Lewis, but I, I, I haven't seen Tech shoot um, just poorly from the perimeter in a long time. Eventually, either Clinch or Sam Frederick, and you know, particularly Morrow, but Mike, uh, I just don't understand. Um, I, I'm watching Maryland play defense. They're playing good man-to-man, -man, but Tech has had some good looks. They're just not making them. I, I don't know why. And you know what, Bobby, you, you look at it, they're playing with two turnovers. So, so they're getting shots, and, uh, you know, that one contested, it's, you know, comes up short. But, it, you know, they're not kicking it all over the lot like they used to. I mean, they, they average 18 turnovers a game, so they're taking care of the ball. Here's Bowers with a strong move, and he banks it in. But, Bobby, you're absolutely right. I mean, Tech right now is 5 of 23, 0 for 6 beyond the arc. And it's 30 to 14, Maryland. Well, this this tech team the one thing this year they have really struggled on the road one and eleven away from home Clinch's pass to Frederick that's a two-pointer That's number 35 Sam Frederick Terrapins do look very comfortable tonight. And as I say that, Tanner Medley turns it over. West has it partially blocked. You know, his Tanner Medley's defense has improved in the latter half of the season. He's gotten a lot of the tough covers Gary Williams has put him out there, and that was a nice recovery off a bad turnover. I want to say about 12 games ago, Mike, when Chris McCray hurt the team and became academically ineligible. I think everybody stepped up their game a little bit. And well, that, that, that first game was in Georgia Tech, and Kaner Medley had 33, so he, you know, he certainly took it on his shoulders offensively in that game. Timeout on the floor with 6.47 to play, and a 32-16 Maryland lead will return after this message from the ACC. Thank you, John. 32 to 16, Maryland. Georgia Tech really struggling offensively. 6:47 to play in the first half. Tim Brandt, Mike Jabinski, Scott Brzezwanski, the whole crew here. Mike Hogwood, Bobby Kremens, everybody working today. Well, the commissioner was kind enough to host us for a lovely dinner last night before this event. I didn't think you were going to bring that up. You had three helpings. <laughs> Were you taking stats before the tournament had started? Right? How many turnovers did I have? Just two. Four, <laughs> four hit the floor a couple times. Here's Frederick for three. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm keeping my eye on you the rest of the week. <laughs> Everything's fair game now. <laughs> Led better. And Kaner Medley brings it back out with 20 on the shot clock. the shot clock for Ledbetter. Gets it to Jones. Six on the shot clock. Painter Medley recognizes it. Ledbetter's got to go. And a shot violation by Maryland. Didn't hit anything, did it? Just nicked the backboard. Strawberry gets it right back. Maryland gets another possession. 
And see that? Start to melt the clock and shorten the first half. That's disheartening, Tim. Yeah, you play 35 seconds of good defense, you get the ball back, and then turn it right over. Whistle, foul, timeout on the floor, 5.33 to play, 32-16, Terrapins. So many great things about the Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament every year. This is Fan Fest. Earlier today, fans enjoying themselves, going through the paces over there. Really a fun venue. So I felt like I was, I was running sometimes. <laughs> Long day for a lot of these kids. They've been here all day. Watched all four games. Miami, Wake Forest, Virginia have all won. Maryland leading here 32 to 16. And the Terrapins shooting 59%, three for six beyond the arc. Foul was on clinch. That's his second. And so Strawberry is at the line. DJ Strawberry just a 67% free throw shooter. But in the last eight games, he's hit 25 of his 31. So he's getting better. Yeah, you talk about. Scoring has never been a problem for this team. I mean, they're third in the conference in, in scoring at uh, just over 78 points per. It's, it's the defensive side of the ball that, that Gary's really been concerned with all year long. Makes him both, so he now has nine points. Terps continue to extend that lead. Take it away by Jones and loses it again out of bounds. He almost had it. Georgia Tech not giving the inbounder many options as far as uh, guys to throw the ball into. They've got to give him some more outlets. And a violation by Georgia Tech. And the violation is he couldn't move. And, that, and, that, and the ball was knocked out. You've got to be stationary. DeAndre Bell thought he had a run of the, of the end line, and that was not the case. Four turnovers now for Georgia Tech. All the way back to Strawberry. He's got a trailer. The bench lets him know they're there. This is Paris Brown. Picks up his dribble and gets into trouble. And turns it over. RBC Centura presents this look at her upcoming ACC telecast. Tomorrow, Miami against top-ranked Duke. Wake Forest and NC State. Virginia and Carolina. What a strange series that was this year. And then the winner of this game against... 12th ranked Boston College, a, number three seed. A huge win up in Charlottesville for the Cavs, and right. then a 40-point drubbing down <laughs> Chapel Hill. Unbelievable. So Sean Dickey turns it over. Too many steps, five turnovers now for the Yellow Jackets. Just the, as a postman, you get in too much of a hurry. He thought he had a drive to the lane and didn't establish his pivot foot. Maryland coming into the tournament talking about the similarities between this team and the one two years ago that won the ACC tournament title here just 24 months ago. Yeah, sixth seed in that situation as well, having to beat the number three, two, and one seeds on consecutive days. Had to get some wins down the stretch, and Bowers with the follow. <laughs> Therapist by 20. Dickey in the lane, jump ball, possession arrow belongs to Maryland. Could not get any worse for Georgia Tech in the first half. What we were just talking about, you mentioned they were the sixth seed in the tournament, won their last two regular season games, really needed to, to have any shot. Not as similar as, of course, John Gilchrist, uh, the, the player of uh, that tournament, MVP, just was outstanding. Outstanding in that tournament, then somehow became a malcontent, left school for the pros, didn't make it to the NBA, he's playing overseas. Jones for three. Are you kidding me? Right. Mike Jones! You talked about the green light. <laughs> it was on on that play. That was a two-on-two -two break from three. And Bell answers with a two. But Mike Jones now with 11 points. I think that Georgia Tech needs to concentrate and try to just carve this down to a 10-point game going into half. See if they can win this next four-minute segment. Paris Brown penetrates and has it blocked. And immediately gets it back. And he walked. 
Eight turnovers for Maryland, 39 to 18. And how about Mike Jones with 11 points? Let's take a look at Mike Jones and what he's done for the Terrapins. He got off to the quick start, nails this early three. Three of four from downtown, then he gets some easy hoops in transition. And the basket just keeps on getting wider and wider for number 23. This last one on the break, he's got 11 points. Now, Tim, consider that Dickey has 10 points for Georgia Tech, but only two other players have scored for their total of 18. And, uh, and Jones has had help 28 points from the rest of his teammates. Dickey keeping them alive. But how about Jones? He hit the game winner against Virginia on Saturday of three. And also, he made the game-saving defensive play against Georgia Tech up at the Comcast Center with a block shot of, of uh, Sam Frederick at the end. Here's Bell. And that's a three. Three-point basket, number one. That'll DeAndre help. Bell. Uh, that's some unexpected offense. DeAndre Bell only six of 20 coming into the year from behind the arc. Tenth Tech now just one of eight. Here's Jones again. Can he keep it going? No, sir. Gary Williams doesn't want a drought here. Inside of Dickey. Double down on him. Dickey gets the roll. Talk and Gary Williams wants a 30-second timeout. Yeah, I talked about winning the last four minutes, and right now Georgia Tech is doing just that, carving a little bit of that lead out. They sure are. Take a look inside. They're coming in with the double team, and Will Bowers is a big body to move around, and somehow Dickey able to get it done and get to the rim. Take a look at our top 25 teams in the nation, presented by Q Motor Oil. Connecticut lost today to Syracuse. George Washington lost today. But I think in NC State, you look at number 25, people talk about Duke, and they've got two losses coming into the tournament. NC State has lost their last three, but I think they're a little healthier. Cam Bennerman is, is back. He'll be playing tomorrow with his hamstring, I think, in a little better situation. And uh, Ilian Eftimoff, that, that ligament in his foot's going to be an issue, I think, until the end of the year. But at least he's looking a little more comfortable. Georgia Tech on a 7 nothing run. That's why Gary Williams took that time out. You look at the top 25. It's not a really a bad thing if some of those top teams lose early in the tournament, get a little rest, save their legs for the big dance. Here's Bowers. Turn around. And he'll go to the line to shoot two. You know, I, I he would he would probably never admit it publicly, but I believe that Gary Williams thought in 04 when they won it, they made an early exit from this tournament. They had a day they lost in the semifinals, I believe, and that extra day really helps. I mean, it's such an emotional grind to go through a three or four day event and then turn around and tee it up the next Thursday in the NCAA tournament. Bowers misses his first, so they're still in this seven nothing drought. I mean, there was a lot of talk about Duke at the uh, end of the season being tired psychologically and physically. And I know that doing a game with Billy Packer, he says it wouldn't be a bad thing if they lost early in this tournament. But now they've lost two. Not that it will affect them very much in the NC 2A tournament. It could affect their seed. I mean, it, 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 it could, you know, but it, I, I don't could, think so. They could lose the one seed, but that's that, that if you if you lose a game here in the quarters, that puts it in play. 40-23 Maryland. 2.25 to play in the first half. Tim Brandt, Mike Jaminski with you. At courtside. Half time, Mike Hogwood. Bobby Kremitz will take it away. Shot clock at 15. West with a spin move. Tough shot. Ball still loose. He gets it back. Bell for two. Air ball will belong to Maryland. That's when I think you have to be a little more patient on. They got the recycle. He really didn't have a good look at the basket. It was a challenge jump shot. You have to look for, for better offense in that situation. Georgia Tech leads the all-time series against Maryland, 33-31, but Maryland's won three straight, eight of the last 12, including both games this year. Here's Gist. Back out to Strawberry. Shot clock at 15. 
Jaw bearing. No, no call, a lot of contact, and last touch by Georgia Tech. Nine on the shot clock. And I think you know, the referees have been consistent at both ends. It's been a it's been a pretty physical game. They're letting them play. Not a lot of as opposed to the this series in the regular season there have not been a lot of free throw shots so far in this first half 16 by both teams well, let me ask you as a bad guy as a big guy that is not a bad thing as long as they don't change the way they call them yeah I, just you'll you know, adjust yeah I, I just went on consistent with them. and and for the player that usually it's the first four minutes of the game that you find out how it's going to be called and then you just want it that way the rest of the time and up a little of a mess Left behind by the contact and the fall on the floor. Turks have nine on the shot clock. Five on the shot clock. And lose the ball. Ahead to West. He's got the layup. I think it was, it was unawareness on the part of Maryland of how much time was on the shot clock. They tried to do something in a hurry and got a turnover as a result. Jones, tough shot, and he puts it back himself. Mike Jones having a terrific ball game. 42-25 Maryland. Marl inside. Dickey, drop step, balls loose. How about this? This is a nice little run here. Marl with a tough shot, and it's 42-27. They've, they've got it. You know, you, ideally, they would have cut it to 10, but uh, I, I think they could at least hold on to some momentum in these last two or three minutes going into the second half. 32 on the game clock, 23 on the shot clock. There's nothing like college basketball, and if you're celebrating the win, do it right. The way you celebrate sure says a lot about you and reflects on your school. So be responsible, take care of yourself and your friends. That's a message from Anheuser Busch. The foul was on Clinch. And well, that's I, his third. And I think the thing that's happened to him is that Georgia Tech has stiffened their resolve defensively. Maryland has gotten very few breakout or easy baskets. That shooting percentage is closer to 50 percent. Where early in the game it was closer to 70 for uh, for Maryland. So Strawberry at the line, misses it, and Bowers knocks it out of bounds. So the shot clock now is off with 28.4 seconds for the Yellow Jackets. Well, you hit a three here, and you're looking at a 12-point ball game. And, uh, all in all, I, I think that uh, Paul Hewitt, he didn't like the start, but given the circumstances, he'd be pretty happy with that. Shot clock, game clock, everything together now. This is 15 seconds left in the half. Maryland just one field goal in the last four minutes, down to seven seconds. Four seconds. West's got to go. They're not going to get one off. This is good if it goes. Tarver's miss, but that's not the shot they wanted. And Paul Hewitt scratches his head as he leaves the court with the Yellow Jackets. Mike Jones with 13 points. And Maryland leads at the half 42 to 27. So the fifth seed, Maryland Terrapins, needing a win badly, have the advantage here at halftime. Winner of this last first round game will advance to play the number three seed, Boston College, tomorrow night at 9. About ready to get the second half going. So we're going to bring in our guys who will call the second half now, Tim Brandt, Mike Jaminski. Guys, I think that run by Georgia Tech at the end of the half really made this game interesting. I agree with you. 11 to 3 run by Tech to climb back in this thing a little bit. Can they come back all the way? You know what? I, I think they need to defend. They need to shoot the ball better. 33% and, uh, you know, seven offensive rebounds, but only scoring two points. So they've got to find some easy offense. I thought Maryland got a little disinterested in that last four minutes. They need to regain that passion that they had early in the game. Let's take you across the court to Scott Brzezwanski. Scott? Well, guys, Maryland's coach uh, Gary Williams told me at halftime that he really loved the way his team was playing defense outside of that last couple minutes of the second half. 
when they got sloppy, but he wants that defensive intensity to keep going in the second half. As for head coach Paul Hewitt of Georgia Tech, he said, you know what, give Maryland credit. Their defense was great, but if we move the ball, make the extra pass, he thinks they'll have the opportunities to get better shots in the second half. Well, two things to look for here. Anthony Morrow of Georgia Tech averages 16 points a game. He only has two points here so far in this one. And Jeremy Smith hasn't even taken a shot, and he averages 11 points. We'll see if they can get in this ball game and help pick up the offense for Georgia Tech. And to illustrate what Paul Hewitt was talking about, his team only has five assists in the first half. So there was a lot of breakdown offensively, some guys trying to go their own way and manufacture points instead of getting it out of the offense. Well, Rashawn Dickey was big inside. You heard Bobby talk about that at halftime. We'll see what happens there as well. This is Morrow working against Strawberry. Air ball. Maryland comes down with it. Ahead to Strawberry. Nice pass. And the put away by a Beckway. And it's going to be about manufacturing energy in this hall tonight, Tim. And uh, Maryland's got its fans right behind its fence, so it may be a little bit easier for them. Georgia Tech's people are halfway across the court. But in this last game, you know, you can't rely on any outside forces. Morrow has it partially blocked. Ball's loose, and Jones comes up with it. The other part of that, Mike, a lot of the people have now left. This arena was just about full at the beginning of the game, and now it's about maybe half. Yeah, and so as, as a player, you know, you're not, it's not going to be the arena that you're accustomed to playing in in an ACC environment. But you do see a lot of this during the NCAA tournament. Here's Gist. Takes the short jump. And the foul is going to be called on uh, Morrow. So for Morrow, that'll be his second. And Strawberry will bring it in. I said they grabbed Strawberry's short shirt and pulled it to the ground. Paul Hewitt not happy. Get back way. Here's Gist with the foul and misses the putback. Wow. Point blank. Those are the type of opportunities you can't afford to give up. I think he, it looked like he was waiting to be hit. Mario West. Tricky dribbles down the lane. Now kicks it out. And a foul on a Beckway. Mario Smith slow to get up. So for Beckway, that is three now. Yeah, this here's the play inside, and uh, Beckway caught him underneath, and he, he landed right on his hip. And, uh, not a lot of padding there. So he'll have a little hip pointer probably tomorrow, a little bruise. So Beckway has to come out of the ball game. Travis Garrison comes back in. This again, we, we talked about the depth. Uh, you know, Will Bowers played very well for Gary Williams, but they can come with Garrison, somebody who's a little more athletic right now. And then if they need Bowers and his size, they can go that way. Clinch lost the handle. Strawberry came up with it. It will take it the distance. And this is how Maryland started the game. And, and they picked it up here coming out of the locker room, regaining that passion, getting turnovers, scoring in the open court. Seventeen fifty-six to play. Maryland trying for the hat trick to beat Georgia Tech three times in one season. Done it twice before. This foul will be called on Travis Garrison. And that's the interesting about thing about preparing for this tournament from our standpoint. And in years past, everybody played everybody twice, so you had a body of work to call and say, you know, what do they do in the regular season? How they match up? And now it's it's almost. Sure, it's, it's, the exception rather than the rule that you can take a look at two games that teams played against one another. Smith still scoreless tonight. Foul was on Travis Garrison, so that's his third. So Beckway has three, Garrison has three. And the play of Will Bowers now will become Thank critical down the stretch. Well, and what Georgia Tech has to do is take advantage of it at the free throw line. They are four of ten right now. They've got four of eleven. Kaner Medley comes up with it. Kaner Medley's been rather quiet since the beginning. He scored seven quick points and hasn't scored since. Nice pass to Jones. How about that pass by Kaner Medley? Great look inside. And you know what? Jones has been operating out of that flex offense a lot more, looking for curls in the paint. Maryland on a run. 17-32 to play. We'll be back.
Maryland ahead 48-27. And let's take a look at how this last play developed. Good look inside by Kaner Medley. And that was a great curl screen by Mike Jones. Jones hit, hit the bucket and Maryland now three of six in the second half. Tech 0 for two. So the Yellow Jackets have yet to score in this half. Maryland 16 fast break points and Georgia Tech only four. And there's a turnover, five second call against the Yellow Jackets. And Paul Hewitt just stunned right now. And, and I've seen that over the course of the year where Georgia Tech has trouble inbounding the ball after a timeout. But that's just as disastrous as you're a coach. You're trying to stem a little run here and build some momentum. And you can't even get the ball in. Here's Jones beyond the arc. That was a brick. Mike Jaminski with the court side. I'm about to get an assist. Right to us, another turnover for Georgia Tech. ACC basketball is brought to you in part by your local Toyota dealers. I've got my hands on I was shooting. <laughs> That's been your mantra. <laughs> genetic code, man. You can't break it. It's in there. Georgia Tech has yet to score this half. Yellow Jackets, very, very young team. Only eight scholarship freshmen and sophomores, so a lot to look forward to. Here's Jones with reverse layup. That's sweet. All right, he's just getting lost along the baseline. You get the sense that uh, Georgia Tech, unless they get something going here in the next few minutes, is going to be a very disheartened basketball team. Another air ball. Gist comes up with it. What a performance by the Yellow Jackets today. They just don't look ready to play. Now the foul on Bell. So DeAndre Bell picks up a personal foul. That'll be his first. Georgia Tech averages 72 points a game. And during the season, they gave up 74 at ACC play. Right now, they're stuck on 27. Well, they, you, just, you know, when we talked about Wake Forest and they had that that win that they could wrap their arms around the, the last game that they played and there really just hasn't been much of anything that's been positive for, for Georgia Tech in the last stretch of this season. And I talked to the coaches and they've had great practices. The spirit of the team has been pretty good. But, you know, they know they're not going to the NCAA tournament. They know they're not going to the NIT, that this was their, their last uh, day in the sun. Well, Georgia Tech has lost 13 of its last 15 games, and here tonight they're shooting 11 for 36 from the floor. Gary Williams tells Ledbetter to take it out, now calls the offense. Gainer Medley to Garrison. And he Banks it in off the iron. Well, and it's you know it's it's way too early to call this one done. But the thing that you have in Maryland, Morrow hits the three. Now you start looking at rest, and you've got Ledbetter out there. Strawberry's getting some uh, you know a little bit of a, a break here that he's not on the floor. You know, Gary Williams has to really walk the fine line of, of making sure of this victory, but then also having an eye for tomorrow. Three for Kaner Medley. He now has 10 points, double figures for him. 15.45 to play. Foul called against Maryland. Get David! And it looks like it's on James Gist. So Gist picks up his third. So if Beckway has three, Gist has three. And Garrison has three for Maryland. Second trip around the ACC, and it's brought to you by Chevrolet. This is the first round action. Miami beating Clemson earlier. Wake Forest advanced with an upset win over Florida State. Number 12 seed beating number five. And then Virginia over Virginia Tech, 60 to 56. So they all advance. Maryland leading big here over Georgia Tech. It's really the only game of the day that hadn't really been close. And Smith is on the board finally, his first two points of the game. Tech picks it up, goes full court, and tries to get more aggressive on Maryland. Here's Gist 
Nice pass by Kaner Medley. Why the uh, pressure of Georgia Tech really not bothering Maryland at all. Kaner Medley handling the ball handling responsibilities. Dickey on Bowers. Bowers has gotten a lot of minutes tonight. Played well. Morrow has it knocked away by Kaner Medley. You know, I, I think in that timeout that Paul Hewitt probably talked to his team about let's finish with intensity. Of these last 15 minutes, let's do whatever the outcome is, let's just be intense in what we do. Well, Tech's just one for four in this half shooting, and they've had four turnovers. How about this now for the game, Mike? Points in the paint, Maryland 32 to 16. Fast break points, Maryland 16 to 7. And points off the turnover, 16 to 6 Terrapins. Well, take a look at your score. When with all those things combined, that's uh, that's good for a 25-point lead on most, on most nights. Absolutely. Let me ask you this now. We we both agree Maryland needs this win and probably a win over Boston College. How about the size of the win? The way they win? Uh, I don't think that I don't think that would uh, matter uh, really against especially against Boston College. You know they've beaten them earlier in the year, but now a win would show that they've beaten them without Chris McCray. Um, so you know it, from that standpoint, it, it certainly helps their resume. And it's interesting they both run. Uh, the flex offense, uh, Maryland runs it a little wider and a little looser, but uh, Boston College is very deliberate. Lewis Clinch picked up his fourth personal foul. Let's go over to Bobby Kremens. Bobby. Uh, well, guys, you know, the first five minutes of that second half, uh, every coach says in locker room, that's where the game is determined, and you've got to give Maryland a lot of credit. They came out here the first five minutes. They would not allow Tech to get back into the basketball game. They're playing great man-to-man -man defense, and you just got to, you know, they're motivated. And you guys said it all. They're motivated because they know they're still alive with this NCAA tournament. And I was shocked, Bobby. You know, I would have thought that Florida State would have been in the same situation. And, I, you know, I, I thought that they'd come out and, and really take care of, of Wake Forest, but almost looked like they got complacent in the second half as well. I agree with you, Mike. Uh, I think they got a little cocky. I, th I think they thought they had that game won. Um, Leonard Hamilton was really upset at Alexander Johnson. And, you know, um, you hate to say this, but Florida State's loss could help Maryland. Oh, I don't think there's any question about that. I, I agree with you, Bobby. And I think uh, UConn losing today and GW losing today, that doesn't help Maryland. That doesn't help the ACC, depending on what happens at the end of those tournaments. And well, Kaner Medley with the bucket E now has 12 points. Especially, especially uh, to George Washington. Because, and you know they're going. But what it does, it brings in somebody else like Xavier into the mix that probably wasn't right. Going. Exactly right. You know, with UConn, you know, somebody who's, who is going to go is probably going to win that tournament. Flipbetter has his shot blocked twice by Rashawn Dickey. We'll talk a little bit more about Maryland and their chances here. If you had to make a case for Maryland, Mike, what would it be? I would look at, you know, I'd look at, again, 8-8 eight and eight in this conference. Um, I, I'd look at, at their wins early. You know, they've got they had two good wins against a nationally ranked team in Boston College. Uh, and probably the thing they hang their hat on is their strength of schedule. Strength of schedule is 11th toughest in the country. And again, we said six of Maryland's 11 losses came to top 10 teams. Plus the fact Maryland, if you look at their history, and sometimes the selection committee does that, Maryland is 21 and 8 in the postseason over the last five years and of course 2002 national champions yeah and you, then you look at them you know everybody's talking about the missouri valley and look at the all the five they were talking about lost in the tournament and you know the, the colonial is talking about three players uh unc wilmington won it but now you know george mason or hofstra and i only think one of those teams at the end is going to get a bid despite what the rpis tell you about the valley Put them in this conference, and what do you think happens? Well, I mean, it's, it's you know, it's, it's no comparison. But what I think have their commissioner out there is taking an active role in how those teams schedule their non-conference games. And obviously, there's a formula that gets their RPI up, and that's what's that's something that the you know that the committee takes a look at. I think Maryland or Florida State, either one, could win that conference. They're in it. I don't think there's, there's any question. It's tough to compare because you're talking about. You're recruiting different athletes. You're, you're getting better players, on, you know, on average over the, you know, from the depth of the team standpoint. Tim Brandt, Mike Cheminsky, Mike Hogwood, Bobby Kremens, Scott Pruswanski, everybody with you bringing ACC action.
here in the first round. Maryland leading Georgia Tech 59 to 32, 12 26 to play. Our Chick fil A nugget of the game Georgia Tech has shot 50% or better in six of their last seven games, and you see what they're doing here tonight. 31.7% now. Back out front. Harris Brown, 10 on the shot clock. Mike Jones from beyond the arc. Draws iron. Unbelievable. The shooting by Georgia Tech tonight has been unbelievable. Why? And they really put Smith in a bad way that time. They gave him the ball too far away from the basket. Just 13 of 42. Here's a steal. West will put that one away with a high percentage slam. Winced when he came down. Yeah, came down a little gimpy on that. You know what else I want to ask you about, Mike? And this has been talked a lot about here lately. Well, we'll talk about it when we come back. There's time out on the floor. 11:39 to play in the ball game. 59 to 34. The Maryland Terrapins trying to advance to play Boston College tomorrow. During the first half, we asked you this all-tell ACC trivia question. Maryland has won three ACC tournaments. What? When did they win it? How many? Of, what was their first? Well, it was when Bud Milliken was coaching. That was definitely pre-G, man. Yes, it was. 1958 <laughs> defeated Virginia. Then in the semifinals, they took out top-ranked Duke in overtime. And in the final, they beat North Carolina 86 to 74. Bud Milliken, the MVP, was Nick Davis. Maryland was 22 and 7 overall, and Bud Milligan got a ride off the court. Uh, several years later, Gary uh, Gary Williams would be Bud Milligan's point guard at Maryland. Turks have a two-on-one to Jones, who slams it. Big night for Mike Jones, and the Terrapins now lead 61-34 as people head for the exits here at the Greensboro Coliseum. When you start thinking again, I'll say about talking about rest. And again, we're talking about Maryland trying to get into the NCAA tournament. Mike, some of the teams that are already in, Belmont, Monmouth, Winthrop, Wisconsin, Milwaukee. I mean, come on. Well, well, eventually, they might have to do away with the automatic berths yeah, to get the best teams in the, in the tournament. Well, and then, you know, talk to a couple coaches about the idea of, of expanding it by one round. So you bring in 128. Uh, and you see the, uh, the offensive numbers. Tech has been pretty consistent and they're right hovering right around 30 percent and Maryland has been awesome offensively and that's a function of getting out and getting easy baskets. I mentioned this to Billy Packer earlier tonight and Billy says well the only reason really you want to keep the automatic person there is because of the money divided up for those conferences which is a, an excellent point. But I mean you're not getting the best teams in the tournament. And as long as it's at 64. I mean, there, are, there are going to be people who are left out no question about it. And it's and you think about it. It's it's only really one more game one more round if you expand it to 128 and uh, The coaches would love it because there'd be a little bit more job security. I think sure But it's a question of logistics and when do you do it and you know what gets moved back what gets moved around? Let's go over to Bobby Kermis Bobby. What do you think? Well listening to you guys, you know that Arkansas win that Maryland got early in the year I think that's gonna be a key factor and I agree with Mike, um, the selection committee, when it comes to um, a strength of schedule, that's a, to me, that's a key criteria. Uh, they'll burn you if you don't go out and play a strong schedule. And, um, you know, Leonard Hamilton had a tough year last year, and he's trying to regroup. And, um, you know, he just did not schedule like he had done in the past. So. I remember a few years ago, Alabama really got burned because they didn't play anybody. But, Bobby, let me ask you this, because a lot of people say that uh, Missouri Valley Conference really figured it out and kind of scheduled in that regard. It's not that it was that difficult of a schedule, but they changed and weighted home home wins against home losses. Yeah. You know, you know, you know I'm biased towards the big conferences. And um, I, I really feel, I, I don't think that the Missouri Valley is going to get all the teams that everybody else thinks they are. But, it, but, but the selection committee, it varies from year to year. They're different people. But you've got to respect the power ratings of the, the larger conferences. You have to. Bobby, talk a little bit about your experience at App State and how you viewed it, viewed the system and the, and the tournament. I know it was different and there were fewer, you know, teams getting. But, you know, as far as being in that type of conference in that situation as opposed to coaching at Georgia Tech, 
Well, it, in, in the Southern Conference, we didn't care who we played because we knew there was only going to be one bid, and that was going to be the winner of the Southern Conference tournament. So you take a team like Davidson. They'll go out and play Duke, Notre Dame. They'll play anybody because they know it's all going to come down to that conference tournament. The Southern Conference is only going to get one bid. How about, Bobby, the size of this win? Do they look at that? No, um, I think I, I agree with you. I think Maryland's got to win um, against Boston College. And I, I feel like, uh, yeah, you know, they can look at this, but I, I think, you know, the first game of a, of a conference tournament is irrelevant. I, I think it's how far they go. And Maryland was on the bubble. Florida State was in a lot better position than Maryland was. But now the, it could have been reversed. And, and I just think, um, Maryland's going to have to beat Boston College. Well, Maryland beat Georgia Tech twice this year. They're trying to do it again here. And then tomorrow, they played Boston College once and beat uh, the Eagles earlier in the year when Boston College started 0-3 in the conference, but then came back very, very strongly. You know, it's, it's going to be interesting to see, especially tomorrow. I think there's a little advantage, at least in the short term, to the teams that have played the game already as opposed to the seeded teams. And I think that Maryland may have an opportunity to come out and get out to a quick start against Boston College tomorrow night. Here's what we're talking about with Florida State. 19 and 9, 9 and 7, 56 though in the RPI and the strength of schedule. Well, and, it, and it's just that, you know, that, that strength, that their, their non-conference schedule, the only really challenge that they had was against Florida, and they lost that game as a game that they had a lead in, and, uh, much like today, but wound up uh, being on the wrong side of it. Folks, if you're just coming home and you're looking at this score, it's correct. 64-36. Maryland led at the half, 42-27. Georgia Tech just has not shown up tonight. So Maryland looking now like it will advance to play Boston College tomorrow. And consider how, you know, amazing to me, Tim, how the fortunes change. You know, you look at last year, Wake Forest was ranked number one in the country at one point and we're a number two seed in the NCAA tournament. And they come into this tournament as the 12th seed. And then you got Georgia Tech who played for a national championship two years ago. And, and, and here they are as the 11th seed and, and not gonna be in the postseason at all. And everything you say, Mike, really hammers home the job that Roy Williams has done because a very similar situation with Carolina in that they lost the top seven guys won the national championship but there was no drop off they bring in freshmen and sophomores and put them together and right now they're playing as well as anybody in the country yeah and and the difference and this is a guy that i think is really underrated in their success bobby frazier and, and a, a point guard who can run an offense i mean he's not a jet uh and he's not going to get you a lot of penetration and hoops to the basket but he is a very very capable basketball player and he has run that club well bobby frazier Averages six points, five assists a game. 6'3", 195 pounder from Blue Island, Illinois. But Co it does a marvelous job at the point. Coach's son, you know, and, that's, uh, and again, and, 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 and the, the same thing can be said about Greg Paulus at Duke. Uh, you know, really overlooked, but the element that we talked about, a point guard and how important it is in this, uh, you know, in, in college basketball today. Uh, Wake Forest has experienced it. Georgia Tech has experienced it. And to, to a degree, Maryland has experienced the same thing. Bell goes out. Mario West comes back in for Georgia Tech. This game now, as you look at the stands behind Ledbetter, just about empty. It's like a scrimmage now. Well, the guy who got sitting up in the booth knows a thing or two about point guards, too, and there it is. How important they are to Sam Frederick, after a little bit of a run in the first half, has been very quiet. Smith continues to struggle, but he's fouled here, makes the bucket, and he'll go to the line for one more. This is the seventh time these two teams have met in the ACC tournament. First was way back in 1998. So Giss now goes out of the ballgame with four. And Beckway comes back in. Back way with a rebound. Maryland 66, Georgia Tech 40. We talk about offensive efficiency. Of it, Maryland 18 assists on 26 made field goals. Pretty good average right there. Tech only eight assists in the game. And a back way with a putback. Maryland Terrapins are looking for their first three game win streak since January. 
steal by Ledbetter. Thought he had it. Thought Strawberry attempted to him. Here's Frederick. And Dickey is fouled. So 14 points for Dickey. He now will go to the line. 7.53 to play. We'll be back. Red Lobster presents the nothing but net shot of the game. Well, this is a break early in the game and a great little pass up to a Beckway who finished. And nice play by Strawberry to let the big man come in behind him. And consider that 22 of Maryland's 68 points have been scored on fast breaks. And that's just the, the ease that they've had in getting up the floor and not having to play against Georgia Tech in the half court. And that was off a steal by Strawberry as Dickey on the free throw comes up a little bit short. Boy, he has really struggled tonight. Although he's their leading scorer and he's right around his average, he just hadn't gotten any help. And his running mate, Jeremy Smith, has also really not contributed with four points, and he averages 11. Also back in it's, it's, it's been across the board that uh, Maryland has, it continues their fine play, and you talked about fashioning a three-game winning streak and what's impressive to me is the timing of it it absolutely had to happen if they were going to have any hope of, of going into the postseason again we go back to two years ago very very similar of course it's even harder to win this tournament now needing four wins in a row and Garrison is fouled he'll go to the line shooting two Maryland's season really turned when they lost to Temple. A very physical game, a game they thought they were going to win. It was a close, heartbreaking loss. They lost it right there in the final seconds. After that, they lost seven of nine, kind of went in the tank for a while. And, and the surprising thing about that loss is it was a great offensive game for Mike Jones. And normally when he puts up big numbers, they win. Take a look at our Jeep game summary, and it looks like this. 69-41, you see the percentage, 34% for Georgia Tech on the field. Maryland with 18 assists, very similar to what they did Saturday against Virginia, where they had 21 assists and 25 buckets. And I, and I think, you know, Paul Hewitt, the thing he's most concerned with there is 55% shooting by, by Maryland. Bobby, not, not good for your former team here tonight. No, but I'll tell you what, guys. Uh, the Yellow Jacket fans are really excited about the future of this program. I'm going to tell you why. Uh, Paul Ewan and his staff went out and signed four, uh, four young men, but two of them are two of the top 15 players in the United States. Uh, one young man out of Georgia and the other out of Memphis. And uh, these are two great high school players. So as bad as things look right now, don't forget Dickie's a sophomore. Uh, Smith's a sophomore, Morrow's a, a sophomore, Clinch is a freshman. There's uh, a three-pointer. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I really feel um, with Paul Hewitt's coaching ability and with these new guys coming in and hopefully some of these guys getting beat up this year will be really hungry during the offseason and work out a lot. And hopefully Georgia Tech can come back strong next year. But Bobby, it's a good point that you make because it's it's not only a young team, and they do have eight scholarship freshmen and sophomores that we're watching here tonight, but, I mean, it's a young league. No, no question. Bobby, I wanted to ask you, when you were mapping out your your recruiting strategy, where on the list were point guards as a priority? <laughs> they, they were a top priority, Mike, as you well know. I, I love point guards. I try to get some big guys like you, Mike, but, you know, <laughs> for some reason they go to Duke or North Carolina. <laughs> But um, I, I love point guards, and we were very fortunate to get them Mark. And, um, you know, I was really excited when Paul Ewitt told me a few years ago that Jared Jack, uh, one of the main reasons he looked at Georgia Tech was because of the point guard history. And, and I, you know, like Wake Forest losing Chris Paul, Jared Jack was a key loss, along with a lot of other great players. And I really, th I really thought Tech would suffer this year. But Paul didn't want to hear about rebuilding. Hey, Bobby. I, I, I got to jump in here because yeah. Beckway just fouled out and Gis comes in. But I, I don't know if you watched Gary Williams during that timeout. He pulled the players over. Jeremy and I mean, it's like he's down to. I mean, he is really trying to stay after him, which I mean, I guess he wants to keep him focused, even with a 70 45 lead. Well, Tim, you know this team as well as anyone. And, and what I'm thinking right now is I'm thinking about the Boston College game. 
uh, can Maryland come out? And, and, you know, is this just a, a really poor tech performance, or is this in a, did Maryland make a statement? Well, I, I think in looking ahead to that game, that the one thing that Boston College does, there are no secrets with that team. They don't shoot a lot of threes, although they've had instances where they can make shots. They, they try to jam it right down your throat. They run that real tight flex offense, and they come inside, and I think... It's going to be Maryland's bigs defensively tomorrow that's going to be a big key. Yeah, I agree. You know, um, Boston College does not put people away. Of course, you've got to remember now, this is their first ACC tournament. And uh, I know they played the Big East, but it'll be a little bit different atmosphere. And again, Maryland, I mean, uh, there's no doubt about it. I, you can see the fire in their eyes and the way they came out the second half, the way they're playing defense. The, you can tell that they're starting to believe that they can definitely um, beat Boston College and, and make a run. And, and we, we, we got to remember a couple of years ago when they made that tremendous run and won the ACC tournament. Yeah, absolutely. They, they look tonight a little bit like they did early in the season when everybody was talking about how hot the Terps were. Then they lost to Gonzaga in Hawaii in a back and forth ball game where they really, both teams played well. And they lost that one very close. Look at Michael Adams, Boston College player. Now I'm assisting with Gary Williams. Well, I think one point that, that isn't talked a lot about, Tim, is the, the change that Gary Williams has had in his staff oh, over the last Peter couple of years. All the, the experience that he liked, the Dave Dickerson's, the, uh, the Jimmy Patsos's of, of the world have been with him for a long time. And uh, you, you see the guys who had served uh, under him, Mike Lonergan going up and, and taking over up in Vermont. Uh, but he has got, relatively speaking, a very young staff. I mean, guys who play for him and know what to expect, but still not a lot of experience. 70 to 46, the Maryland Terrapins, five and a half to play. And now a touch foul on Gist. One, one of the former Maryland greats, Keith Booth. You think Maryland was losing? <laughs> Well, I think he's just, <laughs> Gary's been chirping at him. You know, that may just be a reaction to <laughs> The headache is setting in. He's having a flashback. He said, I've, I've, I've been, I've seen this movie before. <laughs> well, Gist now fouls out. So if Beckway has fouled out, Gist fouls out. Bowers will come back into the ball game to replace Gist. Well, the two big guys both fouled out and disqualified, but you got to say they played pretty solidly tonight. He leaves with... 9.6 rebounds. Uh, and this is where now, if you're Gary, you're looking at the clock, and it just doesn't seem to be moving at all. And Georgia Tech's been able to get to the free throw, free throw line and grind it out. 41. Samara, who's an 88% free throw shooter, try to add another one. And does. Garrison throws it away to Carter. And now the foul is called. The bucket counts. And Amina will go to the line. 24, 24, yes, 24. There's the look. is going to come back in. Initially a good block by Garrison, but uh, Amina just staying with it. This is what, again, this at, at the free throw line, if they continue to get there, it allows them to get into their full court pressure. Still 5.20 to play. Makes that free throw, and Georgia Tech making a little bit of a run here. Kaner Medley back in the ball game, and I think Gary wanted to rest him. Strawberry pushes him. Kaner Medley, and he's fouled. Hard foul at that. So Tech is on a 10-0 run. Kaner Medley will try to end that right here. Well, this is the stretch of the first half where we saw Maryland fall asleep in the last four minutes of the game. They went, uh, I think, all that whole stretch without a field goal. Ended the first half on an 11-3 run. And he makes the first. Pushes the lead back to 20 points. Keener Medley's second is good. 
72 51 so they got it down to 19 points after Maryland had led by 28 now Kaner Medley gives him two more here's Chris and he gets the roll Terrapin's thrown away this is for three Gary Williams better get a timeout because they led by 28 and all of a sudden Georgia Tech on a big time run Well, you know what? We can look ahead to Boston College, but this team right here can't afford to look ahead to Boston College. Mike, there's still plenty of time in this ball game. 15 to 2 run. That's over the last two minutes and 39 seconds. And that 28-point lead Maryland had has dwindled. Well, and I think, you know, given this, given the circumstance of what Georgia Tech is doing, you know, the event way and gifts lost. No matter what, but you've got to get ball handlers in there, and they've got to talk about facing this pressure. And, uh, you know, Georgia Tech is out there freewheeling it right now. So Garrison comes back in. Mike Jones is in. Kaner Medley and Strawberry stay in along with Will Bowers. Last big man standing for the Terrapins. Well, even that, I'm, I'm surprised that Bowers is, is still in there, that they might have gone smaller and got a little ball handler in there. Maryland sloppy with the ball right now. Now they get it to Strawberry. A lot of bumping and grinding going on. Fifteen on the shot clock. Lazy pass to Garrison. His jumper draws iron. And the push in the back on Maryland is going to be called on Bowers. Well, they've just, you know, they've turned up the defensive intensity as Georgia Tech and Maryland not only having trouble getting it over half court, but also doing anything in the half court. So Dickey will go to the line. He's an excellent free throw shooter. And there's still hope for Paul. Well, you know what? That's the, that look you saw. He, he wants to latch on to, you know, maybe we can get this done. It's it's a big lead in these four minutes. And Dickey's come to life. He's got 16 points now to go with his 10 rebounds. Now seven for 11 at the line. 423 to play. Strawberry. And the foul. Hard foul. Strawberry is shaken up. He's just taking inventory right now. I still I like the aggressive play if you're Maryland. You gotta get some points up there. You know, and then and, and I think he felt in that run out that he had a good look at the rim. Rather than running clock right now, they've been too passive as it is. Well, you're right. They have little Carl, Carl Hess taking one on the nine as a result. That's ACC tournament basketball right there. Two points tough to come by. Strawberry makes a much needed free throw. One shot. Pushes the lead to 16. Still 418 to play. It's a heck of a run by Georgia Tech. Clinch off balance. Swish. All of a sudden, the Yellow Jackets are hot. All right, that was a tough shot. Kaner Medley all over him. His foul is on Mario West. Partner, this last four minutes may take a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is this is the type of game that these teams played earlier. We talked about it in the two game series. Maryland shot 79 free throws combined. Georgia Tech 58. Now, the first half didn't play out that way, but the last four minutes he's, it's going to be a free throw shooting contest. Strawberry makes it again. Keep in mind, Maryland led 42 27 at the half. They came out in the second half and built that lead to 28 points. And the lead now 16. This is for three. To Kaner Medley. 
broke the press nicely that time. No, he did. He was under control, and then Mike Jones almost got out of control, but was able to get it together and finish. Morrow tucks it like a football player and makes the running one-hander. Strawberry looking for help. Crosses the timeline. Lazy pass by Jones is kicked out of bounds. Well, there's another timeout. 3.19 to play. Kaner Medley helping his cause. Having a nice night. 19 points. Pepsi players of the game. Rashawn Dickey with 17 points, 10 rebounds. Nick Kaner Medley, 19 points, 8 rebounds, 7 to 10 from the field. Although they're not done yet. Still have 319 to play. And it's 78-62. Maryland's 28-point lead here in the second half has been cut dramatically. Led better at the point now. Whistle away from the ball. And it's called a Morrow. So Anthony Morrow will pick up another personal foul. That's three on him. Tech has hit five of its last six field goals. Maryland just one of its last five. ACC quarterfinals tomorrow at noon. Miami and number three Duke. Guillermo Diaz, a solid win today. That was a gutty performance by Miami behind in that game and uh, really never giving in. Trailed almost the entire way. 20 points now for Kaner Medley. He's got another one coming. It kind of, uh, I think it was neat to see Frank Hayes yesterday at practice talk to his team about what the ACC tournament, uh, you know, is all about here in Greensboro. Him having grown up near this area. And, and I think it was a special moment for him to get a tournament win here. Mario West finds an alley. Acrobatic shot. The putback is good. And Georgia Tech wants a timeout. Murrow with a nice follow there. It'll be a full timeout for the Yellow Jackets. Time now getting away from them. No, they've been active. Uh, you, you know, you, you look and say, what if, if this type of energy and activity had been there right from the start of the game, it, it might not be a 15-point deficit. They've shown stretches, especially at the end of the first half and at the end of the second half, but it hasn't been there consistently for 40 minutes. You know, Mike, you were talking about Maryland coaches earlier. It all started with H. Burton Shipley. He was the first coach of record for Terrapin basketball. Led the Terps to 243 wins. The innovative Bud Milliken finished his 17-year stint. The helm with the same number of wins as Shipley. Some of the others that you'll remember, how about the left-hander? Lefty Drizell, always animated, and he won a lot of ball games. Charles Lefty Drizell for years was the wingest coach in Maryland history until January 7th when he handed the ball to Gary Williams as the all-time winningest coach in College Park. Gary Williams now with 352 wins at the University of Maryland. Well, and that's, you know, the thing about Lefty, and I competed against him. He recruited me um, and competed against him for four years. He made he made basketball relevant at Maryland, and, and, and Gary is very open and vocal about that. I think Gary, I mean, uh, Lefty made it relevant for everybody in the Washington metropolitan area. Came in and he said he's going to make Maryland the UCLA of the East. Never quite got there, but very, very well done by Lefty Brazil. So even if that vision fell short of the mark, it's still, you know, elevated where they could be a compete and be a factor year in and year out in, in the ACC. See if Maryland can melt the clock down, and shorten the game, and get out of here with a win. 2:35 to play. Ledbetter has it knocked away. They can give it to Georgia Tech. Well, you talk about the feel of this tournament and, and the field of, of and how the NCAA tournament has changed in the field of 64. It should have made matters a lot better if back in 74 they had the same thing because two of the best teams in the country never got to the uh, postseason that year in, in, uh, in Maryland and North Carolina. No question about it. Maryland's team with Tom McMillan and Len Elmore and John Lucas, Mo Howard, phenomenal. And of course, NC State won the national title. Still the best game ever played in this conference since he stayed in Maryland. And the turnover. Possession arrow belongs to the Maryland Terrapins with 218 to play. So the fifth seed, Maryland Terrapins, will now advance to play Boston College 
Well, and Maryland loses it right there. Yeah, that was a, a poor decision, and uh, I don't know, it was, it was both passer and receiver that time. The strawberry looked like he flattened out some. I guess that Maryland was a fifth seed, and obviously they were the sixth. David Neal comes in now for Travis Garrison. David Neal, a 6'7 freshman from Northern Virginia. He's got to hit the round running, too, after having sat for 38 minutes. Got those fresh legs. They put him on Jeremy Smith. Morrow's shot is short. Kaner Medley comes up with it. Well, I think the only the, the downside to this victory, maybe if you're the coaching staff for Maryland, is that they've had to work a little too hard to seal the deal. And the rest that we're talking about now, Gist in the Beckway, by definition, who fouled out, got a, a little easier night. But Kaner Medley and, and Strawberry and, you know, that, that group there has, has, has had to spend a lot of energy in this win. Rashawn Dickey picks up his fourth personal. And Ledbetter goes to the line. He's only a 62% free throw shooter. Gets the roll there. Well, the Terps ended the season with wins over Miami and Virginia in the last game ever played at University Hall. Now they come in here and beat Georgia Tech rather soundly. Now their NCAA hopes will go to tomorrow's game against Boston College. 133 to play. This is clinch. Nice rebound by Morrow. And he has it knocked out by David Neal. So David Neal comes into the ball game and gets a block shot. Dickey still loose, and Kaner Medley comes up with it. Yeah, that was a good job by Bowers inside, holding his ground. Really, Dickey had nowhere to go. Amaro commits the foul, so that'll be four on Morrow. He, he had to check with the score while he was over there. Is that four or five? DeAndre Bell will check back into the ball game. Well, I think, I think Bobby was right in that there, there should be a lot of hope for Georgia Tech fans with this team going forward. They're very young, lots of freshmen and sophomores, a good recruiting class coming in, and certainly on the, on the face of it, nobody in that freshman and sophomore class looks like they're, you know, should be leaving early, so the guys are going to be there for a while. Kaner Medley and Strawberry leave the ball game, and the Maryland faithful who have stayed give them a standing ovation. Chakura. Paris Brown come into the ball game. Chakura's seen his first action tonight. He's a 6'5 junior from Silver Spring, Maryland. Played at Good Council High School. All with James Gist. Kaner Medley leaves with 20 points. Jones, 19 points tonight. DJ, 15, and the Beckway, 10. And really, the only uh, only guy leaving this team who played a lot, Theodos Tarbuck, as a senior. This is his, this will be his last action for Georgia Tech. One under a minute to play now. So this one is officially in the books. We've said that several times tonight. But we really mean it this time. <laughs> and Clinch has called for the offensive foul. <laughs> so the Maryland Terrapins now will build their resume to 19 and 11. Clinch picks up his fifth. He's gone. Bunch of DQs tonight. Boston College has to be scratching his head saying, what do we expect tomorrow? Well, I, you know, any team, you you expect for the good Maryland that you saw. And because, uh, you know, there, there are any number of reasons why they, they had these lapses in this game. 
but uh, you saw a team that really liked to get it up and down the floor and uh, they played as well offensively for long stretches in this game as I've seen them and also they played with a lot of defensive intensity. That being said, that Boston College is a very tough team to blow out. They're, they're very deliberate. They've got a way of getting a, a, a hold on the pace of the game and playing the way they want to play. And a shot violation against Maryland, but it doesn't make any difference. 14.8, they just wanted to take away those seconds. So one more possession for the Yellow Jackets. This is Zam Frederick. Running one-hander. And no good. Air ball, and that's it. Mike, I'd like to say it was fun, but this was the most lopsided win of the day. Miami advanced, Wake advanced, Virginia advanced, all with close ball games. Now Maryland joins them in a very lopsided game. Well, it'd be interesting. I, I hope the Virginia team that shows up tomorrow is the one that played Carolina up in Charlottesville. And because uh, it was it was not pretty in Chapel Hill. We talked about that earlier. Our final score, Maryland 82, Georgia Tech 64, the Maryland Terrapins advance. Let's go over to Mike Hogwood. All right, Timmy, G-Man, thanks a lot. 82-64, Maryland here in this final game of the day advances on to play tomorrow. They'll play Boston College in the late game tomorrow night. Want to take a look at our Toyota brackets. You will see that in the first game today, Miami beats Clemson. So it's Miami-Duke first game tomorrow. Wake Forest beats Florida State. They'll play NC State in the second game. Then in the night session, North Carolina with the bye. They play Virginia, the team that beat Virginia Tech tonight. And you just saw Maryland win. They play Boston College tomorrow night at 9. I think we got a great day of ACC basketball tomorrow.